Oh, howdy all. Grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Welcome to day 18 of Teaser Season for patch 3.24 and the upcoming Necropolis expansion. Yesterday was a completely massive drop of news. Grunning you Games gave us all of the scarabs. And so for the day 17 video, I did something different, did it as a live stream. But the entire video of that will be linked to at the end if you missed it. That was a very long one. This one, however, is going to be nice and short. I do have a quick announcement though, and that is I can't put out a day 19 video. The reason for that is that Easter is just not a good time of year for me. It's the only national four day weekend in Australia, and a lot of the friends that I went to uni with years ago have now scattered around the country, and we'd all organised a while ago to catch up over Easter in Melbourne. That means I'll be too busy tomorrow to put out one of these videos, and I'll also be missing days one and two of League Start. However, I am working on some discussion of what I will be League Starting, and hopefully I'll be able to get together a video that is my League Start plans that will go live at some point during the day tomorrow. And if you want to manipulate the YouTube algorithm into showing you that video, subscribing to the channel or liking this video will achieve that. Anyways, naggy announcements out of the way, let's get on to the news for today. First up is the Necropolis Challenge Rewards. This one is a 4 tier armor set called the Mischievous Hawker armor set. So there'll be a basic version that you'll fully unlock once you get to 16 challenges, and then when you get to higher numbers of challenges, you'll unlock more and more of this most likely with its final form coming online at 38 challenges. When you're wearing this armor, there's a number of odd interactions that relate to trading and also just to dropping items on the ground. If you drop an item on the ground, its normal visual effects will be replaced with a pile of junk, and if you trade with someone, rubbish will shower all over them. Now, if I was a better person than I am, I'd advise you never to do this in the Rogue Harbor, and never to ask the other parties involved in trades with you to come to the Rogue Harbor in order to do this. That's what I would say if I was a good person. I'm not that better person though, so I will just point out that the Rogue Harbour does tend to be the most crowded of the cities in the game. So if you want to make sure that you do get to show off your challenge rewards, that's probably the best place to do it. Secondly, Grenegy Games put together a little bit of a meetup recap for all of the news that's come out of the recent Path of Exile 2 meetup. So I'll put a link to that down in the description below. Third and finally, they have put out a recently asked questions section. Now, some of these questions are very simple, straightforward answers. The most important one is that yes, they have given absolute confirmation that your Atlas passive tree does modify tier 17 maps. Note that this will not include Valdo's maps. This is just the tier 17 maps. They're being added with the new penultimate boss system. Anyway, let's go through these. Are Scarab Drops divided into different tiers of rarity? Yes, they are. Is farming them in white maps optimal? No, because some of them are drop level restricted to higher tier areas. Desecrate's base skill effects are affecting performance. Can you fix this? They have a fix coming for this at launch, where they're going to be enabling dynamic culling for the skill, so its performance should be better if you're using dynamic culling. Some gems in the 2020 post had, you cannot use this attack directly, or you cannot cast supportable triggered spells directly removed from their text. What does this mean? Effectively, this is just a wording change, no change to the actual effect of those skills. Regarding the Back to Basics node, does it mean that randomly spawnable mechanics have no chance to appear, or that you can't force mechanics onto maps if you take that node? The answer is the more restrictive, you cannot force mechanics on. So even a Scarab that says, adds Delirium Error, that Scarab will do absolutely nothing. It also won't be consumed. Are Hillet Crafts that over quality weapons and armor still available? No, they're not. There are other ways to over quality weapons and armor, but they are generally weaker than the Hillet Crafts that existed in the past. How many collectible corpses can we expect to find per area or map? This will depend on how much you juice your maps as it scales with Necropolis passives and with pack sives, but as a rough estimate, maybe three from a rare map. How many corpses can be stored in the Necropolis Morgue? 64. Can multiples of the same All Flame Ember packs be used on the same area, i.e. can you make everything frogs? Yes, you can make everything frogs. Are tier 17 maps affected by your Atlas passive tree? Yes. Can you still get an 8 mod map when you Vala map? Yes, you can. Will existing Maven's invitations in Standard League and other permanent leagues like Permanent Hardcore, will they be deleted? Yes, they will. Are Maven's writs still itemized drops, or will they be provided by Kirak as well? They're just going to keep dropping the same way. 10 Crescent Splinters becomes 1 Maven's writ. How do collectible corpses work when playing in a party? Instance owner gets them, and other players in the party are 50-50 to get them. Could you clarify the wording of mana cost for the new Archmage? Essentially, the additional mana cost that is imposed by Archmage support is then multiplied by everything else on the gem. Can you still get boss fragments that would normally only drop from the Shaper or normally only drop from Atsuri from stack decks and Diviner's strong boxes? So this is the Divination cards, the Last Hope and Sambodi's Vow for the Atsuri fragments and the Divination card, the Eldritch Decay for the Shaper ones. 
The answer is the ones that come from the Shaper and the Elder are considered to be boss exclusive. That's because there's no other mechanics that provide them, and so the Eldritch Decay is essentially removed from the Stack Deck pool and the Diviner's Strongbox pool. However, Mortal Fragments have been added to other content, such as Ritual. Ritual actually seems to drop more of them than Atsuri does. And so the Divination cards that give those Fragments will continue to drop. You can pull Last Hope and Sam Bodhi's Vow out of a stack deck, but you can't pull the Eldritch Decay. How does the Cartography Scarab of Corruption, i.e. the 8 mod Scarab, how does that work with Tier 17 maps? It kind of doesn't, because Tier 17 maps cannot drop Corrupted. For me, this does raise a follow-up question, which is one of the Delirium Scarabs modifies the way that maps drop, I also wonder if that can apply to Tier 17 maps or not. That's the one that causes maps to drop Delirious. Additionally, what about Tier 17 maps that drop in your Tier 16 maps when your Tier 16 maps have a pathological prop from your Atlas? A whole bunch of these corner cases would be interesting to see, although it wouldn't surprise me if we find that out once the patch goes live. There's a number of little changes to the patch notes today. These need to be mentioned quickly. The first one is a change to the way that Archmage is worded. Now, for some people, this is a clarification. For other people, this is a functional change. It really depends on the way that you interpreted the word. They've gone with something more unambiguous. Essentially, Archmage's mana cost is always going to be based upon your maximum unreserved mana. It is not ever going to be based upon your current mana. The old wording, the additional cost, was ambiguous, and a lot of people thought it could be based upon your current mana or upon your maximum unreserved. It is definitely going to be maximum unreserved mana, which is the weaker of these two possible interpretations. Archmage still looks like it's going to be incredibly, incredibly strong. This just means that compared to the other interpretation, it's going to be a little bit weaker than some people had thought it was going to be, and that items like Mjolnir are going to continue to be very, 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 very popular in this league. The other change that matters to temporary league players is that the changes that are being made to allow control and left click to spam use a particular currency, these are now going to work for regret orbs and for orbs of unmaking. This is a really welcome quality of life one. And if you're a standard player, don't go and turn all of your Chaos Orbs into Surveyor's Compasses, because if you do, you're going to get burned. Surveyor's Compasses are going to be deleted when the patch comes. Previously, there was no announcement made as to what was going to happen to them, and I think it may be the case that a couple of people might have had the smart idea, oh, why don't we go and spend all our Chaos Orbs from previous leagues on Kirak, and then maybe those will turn into Veiled Sextants after the patch. No, they're not turning into Veiled Sextants, and they're just going to disappear entirely. Anyways, that's all we've got for today. Once more, the live stream of the Day 17 version is up if you want to go through all of those Scarabs. That was a much longer stream than I was expecting it to be, but there's a lot of Scarabs to discuss in it. And I'll be trying to put together a video that outlines my start of league plans, including the build that I'll be playing and the Atlas tree that I'll be using. This is likely going to be a version of something I played in 322, where I played a Righteous Fire and Searing Bond Chieftain, but adapted a moderate amount and probably using Fire Trap instead of Searing Bond. May your have interesting results.